Hi part ones, it's Thursday, July the 5th, and we're into the second module, uh, module two, which is church, past, present, and future. And uh, this module uh, deals with um, the history of Catholic education, which I'm gonna focus on quite a bit uh, in this video. But what I wanna do first of all though, is just kinda go back, give some feedback, and um, just go over some of the course stuff uh, that you might've missed in getting started. So hopefully by now you guys have learned to navigate D2L, and, uh, and you've figured out uh, how much time you need to work on this course. Um, it does pick up in terms of, uh, it's gonna be a lot more work as um, we get into scripture and morality and ethics, sort of the heavier units. Uh, we did start off a little bit late this week, so um, just kind of keep that in mind as you're kind of planning out your next couple of weeks. Uh, I know some people are working ahead. That's why I don't uh, close the modules. I leave them all open so that people can uh, pace themselves as they need because they you know some of you guys will look ahead and say okay I've got a family wedding coming up next week and I'm gonna be busy for three four days whatever your involvement is and so I got to get as much as I can get done now so that's why I don't want to limit you guys but also just be kind of aware of the fact if you are working ahead that you have to keep coming back and and, and interacting with the community by reading people's posts and um, and responding to them and again, you don't have to limit yourself to the two posts. Um, please take some time, read through some of this material. Uh, a lot of what you guys are posting is more for you than for me. You know, especially the lesson plans. Uh, you know, that's more for you guys to share your resources, okay? So uh, keep that in mind as you are uh, moving along. I did resend the course outline and I changed the structure. I, I, I put the number of boxes needed per uh, task uh, for you guys to interact with on your online uh, so the first box is obviously for your discussion and then two or one uh, for how many you have to respond to so it does change with module three that you only have to really respond to one it says one to two uh, I will be reading one if you want to keep posting that's great you know, that's the more you put in, the more you're going to get out of this. Okay, so please use this as a resource for you because now today I'm going to have to send emails to people and remind them that they haven't posted for comments and some of the uh, the topics. Okay, so keep track in that way. Um, and if I make a mistake and send you an email, you've already uh, responded. Just correct me. <laughs> Okay, and I'll go back and I'll go look for your post, but I really try hard to do that before I send out an email, but uh, our paths could kind of miss uh, in, in, in terms of your response and when I last looked. Um, when you do, and uh, so just to give you an idea of this is what I do, I keep track, so I've got the class list, I'm making notes, I'm checking off, this way I get a overview of uh, what's going on and if you email me tell me something's happening I jot down notes on this page too so I don't forget okay so keep me posted as things are going on in your lives if they're preventing you from uh, staying on task uh, let me know okay and uh, also when you get to part three I just posted it I actually put it in an email but this is in the contents area in module one at the very beginning you will see that there is a um, uh, language of the heart alignment chart so this gives you the required pages that you need to read when you see it in the content page and it gives you the both additions okay so I did email that to you guys as well maybe you'll print it off or something keep it by you and it gives you the 2003 and 2017 page numbers you need to read in order to do the work in module three okay so that's sort of the business part of uh, this video uh, I do want to comment though uh, a little bit on what you have posted and tell you kind of what I do so I do read absolutely everything okay even when I say I'm only gonna read one of your comments you know when we get to module three I'll read everything uh, I'm reading because I need to see um, how you guys are interacting and I need to see uh, what's being said if there's anything major that needs to be corrected, I need to correct it. Um, in the beginning, I also wanted to kind of see, you know, how, how you are treating one another. But I find that everyone is being really, really nice in this course. And people have consistently been very affirming with each other and complimentary, um, gentle critiquing, but not too severe. So I think people are very aware of the fact that we don't see each other face to face and that, you know, people are, are careful to choose their words, which is nice. 
but uh, and I'm glad because that really creates a, a great community because um, you know once we put something in print you know uh, if people are very critical of it then we become very self-conscious so uh, keep going keep affirming keep responding keep getting ideas from each other this is the one of the great resources of doing an online course is you get incredible resources and I'm really just the facilitator this is what really bothered me in the beginning is I love to teach I love to talk you can can tell right by these videos that's why I do these videos because I really miss the face-to-face -face interaction but I will be giving little mini lessons here and there especially when it comes to scripture and morality I will do a little video with a mini lesson because I really you know uh, it's harder it's hard to type it all up so I like to do that but uh, I do want to refer to the um, the first task you guys had to do about the meditation and uh, and just say some comments there because uh, I didn't write back to anybody so you'll see that I'll choose pick and choose I will comment on some things some things I won't I'll just read and maybe make a general comment to everybody so uh, so we'll see as, as it progresses uh, uh, where I make my comments okay I like to stay interactive with you guys anyways um, the whole meditation thing I love it sometimes when people say oh I hate this and you can do that you can I know if you were afraid you're like oh gosh I don't like this but I have to write something nice it's the first post yeah okay but honestly like if something like Constructive criticism is excellent. This is what we're here for, to kind of uh, shoot out ideas. But the whole concept of meditation has really taken off in our society, and I just want to make a comment on that. Um, and the reason why it has, we have such an increase in anxiety. I mean, I can't get into it. There's not enough time. There's so much that, you know, the medical profession, the psychological, you know, psychologists, and, you know, uh, there's so many theories out there, you know, in terms of why we have so much anxiety. And people are turning to something to help, right? So we've taken prayer away. If you really think about it, we've become a very secular society. And we lack a prayer life. And we are spiritual beings. We're physical, we're mental, we're emotional, we're sexual. We are the whole package. And part of that whole package is we're spiritual. And that's one of the gifts of Catholic education. Because we don't have to take that one part away from the child when we're forming them to become these amazing people and they leave us, right? We get to do the whole package. We don't have to leave out their spirituality. But society, as it becomes more secularized, has kind of taken our spirituality out of the mix, okay? For different reasons. And so people are craving that because we are spiritual beings. Even atheists sometimes come back and say, you know, yeah, <laughs> there is a God. I am spiritual, you know, and then again, spiritual, religious, all this. There's all these different categories. And again, the video is not enough time to talk about that. But our spiritual needs are not being met in the society. And uh, there is a battle between the sacred and the secular. And we fight that battle in Catholic education. We as Catholic educators are, are challenged to find the sacred and the secular, not to get rid of the secular, but how do we live in a secular reality and find the sacred in it? That's the challenge. And so now that meditation is kind of taking off, it just goes to show we're missing prayer. We're missing that part of our lives. And we get to, as Catholic educators, we use that as a tool. And a lot of people choose not to. And I've spent my almost my entire career trying to encourage teachers to pray. Because it settles people. It calms people. Even myself, when I was studying at St. Mike's, the Faculty of Theology, some professors started with prayer, some didn't. And I noticed a difference in myself. When I'd be driving downtown, trying to get to class, get into my seat after a hard day's work, and then boom, they go right into the lecture. And then there were some profs that stopped and prayed before we, we went into the lecture. And it was, it was a big difference for me. Think about your kids. How, what a difference it makes, okay? So when you enter the world of meditation, try not to secularize meditation. Try to um, weave our faith into it. Uh, our prayers are meditative. It's even the ones, the you know, the, the standard traditional prayers. And if you think about the Hail Mary, it's part of a meditation. It's the rosary. So we say that prayer over and over again. And when you think about meditation, it's about repeating things. If you're doing yoga and, you know, out of that tradition, you're repeating. And so, you know, when, you, when you're praying the race, rosary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, Mom, so and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now in the hour of our death. Amen. There's a rhythm. And then you would start again. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. And then sometimes you get lost in it. Some of you said you can follow. That's fine. Think about when you drive. Like I'm, I'm at the cottage. Sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm in Barry already. Where did the road go? How did I get here? I wasn't even thinking, but I was driving. 
And sometimes we do that with the prayer too, or the mass, or the homily, or the gospel. And that's why we repeat, we repeat, because at some point we're going to tune in. That's why the gospel's in a three-year cycle, because we don't always catch it in the first time, second, third, 15th, 20th. By the 30th, we're like, oh, that makes sense. Right? So don't be too hard on yourself when you tune out. But what I really want to say, <clears throat> um, the main part, the main thing I wanted to say was, you know, we really need to, um, you know, what's old is new again. And so we're making prayer trendy again, but rooted in what we're about. Rooted in what we're about. I always did yoga with teachers when I took them to Italy, Greece, and Turkey for these courses. I always did optional yoga in the morning, dear God, in the morning I regretted that, but anyways. <laughs> But I always started it with prayer. And I had the teacher's line shavasana, which is the starting posture, the corpse pose. And after the breathing, I read the gospel to them. So that when we went into the different postures, the gospel was infused in us. We might not have been consciously thinking about it, but the gospel had been spoken to us. And as we were physically waking up to the day, our spiritual life was being woken up with remnants of the gospel already in us think about it oh we could do so much with our kids just even for a few minutes in the beginning of class in the beginning of a new subject the afternoon oh the possibilities are endless and there were some really great ideas out there in terms of what you're doing in your schools keep sharing it's awesome 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 resources okay that was my um rant for first module. Second module, I'm so excited about it because I love the history of Catholic education. We need to know our story. I've already started reading some of your posts. Keep that with you. And I'm going to respond to this again because this is such an important part that we can't lose because we're, we, we need to, to protect our system and move it to the, to, the, to the future. So our system is based on sacrifice. It's rooted in the beginnings of the religious organizations that gave up everything to establish the social structure of our society. Healthcare, schools came from our religious, the Catholic Church. Huge contributions to society we tend to forget when we're bashing the Catholic Church. But that was done on sacrifice. We could never have this system without that sacrifice. And to tell you the truth, this was the first textbook in Ontario in public education okay so uh, think about that so uh, as you're doing this module I want you to think about what's the sacrifice today because as this gift gets passed forward so does the sacrifice and how do we in Catholic education in 2018 how do we sacrifice to get this system going to the future think about it I'll share an answer with you later on let's pray the gospel of the day and so let's hold in our prayers. Uh, first of all, our, our one of our uh, class members, uh, Candice, who lost her cousin yesterday, Amy, um, who passed away, and she, and she told me she was um, the closest to her as a sister. So this is very difficult, and, and so as a community, uh, even though we d we're not together, let's hold each other together through our prayers. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. And this is a reading from Matthew's Gospel. After getting into a boat, Jesus crossed the sea and came to his own town. And just then some people were carrying a paralyzed man lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, I love that, he saw the faith of the crowd. Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. I love that because people used to think if someone was wrong with you, something was wrong with you, it's because you were a sinner. Not necessarily true. We know that today. But back then, that's the way they thought. Then some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralyzed man, Stand up, take your bed, and go to your home. And he stood up and went to his home. When the crowd saw this, they were filled with awe, and they glorified God who had given such authority to human beings. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I highly recommend it. Read the Gospel of the day. 
See where it takes you. It may not make sense when you first read it, but as your day unfolds, bits and pieces of it will come back to you. God bless. Keep up the great work, and we'll check in again next unit. Peace.